Hey guys, welcome back. Tux here with another mouse review. Today we are looking at three different mice from three different companies, which I think are the great value for your money in quarter one, 2021. Today we've got the HyperX Pulse Fire Haste, the Razer Viper Wired or the Mini. At the moment, I've got the normal one with me and the Rocat Burst Pro. In this video, I'm going to be comparing these three mice side by side and trying to help you which one's worth your money the most. Um, obviously, mice are very subjective. So this is all my opinion. And I think each mouse is going to be good for um, a different type of person, you know, different hand size and different grip styles. But I'll try and make it as easy and digestible as possible for you guys. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you dislike, dislike. And if you love the video, hit the sub because I'm going to be coming out with a lot more reviews. So firstly, let's jump into the clicks, which is obviously going to be quite important for a mouse because it's something that you're going to be clicking thousands of times every, every single day. Um, first, let's start with the HyperX Pulse Fire Haste. So you've got TTC Golden Switches in these, which are very crisp and tactile, but they are quite light as well. I wouldn't say they're too light. I would say they're probably on the lighter end, but they're towards the middle. Um, and they are very snappy and responsive, and they do feel quite premium because they are aftermarket switches. Now, the Razer Viper uses their optical switches. This is actually the V1 version because they've come out with a V2, which are apparently slightly more tact uh, tactile. Um, but these, to me, feel absolutely fine. They're definitely not as snappy um, as the HyperX, but they do feel pretty good. They feel slightly mushy, but nothing that you would uh, you would complain about in-game. Um, honestly, I don't have any complaints about these buttons. They feel very fast because they are, are optical switches, and you're never going to get any debounce issue with these, which is quite important because something like the G Pro um, has had uh, double switch, double clicking issues in the past, um, just because of the way the switches are vaulted and because they use Omron 50Ms, but you won't have that issue with optical. As for the Rocat, this also uses optical switches, but I think this one is definitely my least favorite out of the three. They're quite clunky, I would I would describe them as. They're quite heavy as well. So I think they're good for FPS games, but fast clicking type games, maybe like Fortnite, League of Legends and games like that. I don't think this is the best switch for you, but if you play something like an FPS, um, they're going to be quite responsive, but they do feel a little bit clunky. Now on to weight. The Rocat Burst Pro, I believe, weighs about 67 grams. Um, the Viper weighs 70 and the, the Pulse Fire Haste weighs, I believe it's 59 grams, 60 with the cable maybe. Now, I do generally prefer lighter mice, um, especially for Fortnite and stuff like that. Where So what I would say for a general um, a guide is if you're playing games that require very large angles and I would say more uh, tracking, then I would say probably a lighter mouse is better. But if you're playing games like CSGO or Valorant, which requires a more flicking style, um, or maybe you just don't, you know, maybe you're quite heavy handed, I would say that a 70 gram mouse is probably the perfect middle ground. Um, the Rocat Burst Pro isn't too light, in my opinion. You can use it for both games. Um, I think like the 65, 70 is probably a good range for most games. But when you go down to 60, I do feel like I lose a bit of stability. It's the same thing with the G Pro uh, Super Light great mouse but for some people it's going to be a little bit too light for those sort of games um i think the viper definitely feels the best in hand in my opinion with the weight i just feel very steady but also very snappy and then the rocat burst pro was probably my favorite mouse for fortnite whereas the the hyper x just feels because of the shape it doesn't feel as good for for most games for me but i think for some it's going to be great for games that like fortnite and maybe apex legends but maybe if you're playing you know cs valorant stuff like that i would have to have something with a little bit more weight purely because in Valorant and CS, you're going to be flicking a lot. And when you get a bit more weight in your mouse, the stopping power actually increases slightly. Um, and I feel like you can almost navigate the mouse a little bit better in the precise, um, in those precise shots uh, because you're able to feel the mouse a bit more and you know where it is. Whereas with a lighter mouse, it feels a bit more floaty. So yeah, I mean, that's all personal preference. That's just sort of my two cents on, on the situation. Some people, you know, may love light mice for CS and Valorant because you, you can make micro adjustments easier or some people believe you can. Um, and some people may prefer heavier mice for Fortnite and stuff like that. But in my opinion, slightly heavier for games like CS and uh, Valorant. Um, this one's a good middle ground, um, but this one is probably too light for CS and Valorant. Um, at least if you want to reach your peak performance and you're playing at the top level, unless you're willing to put, you know, tons of hours into, into mastering a really light mouse because they can be great. They have their advantages, but they also have their cons. As for the cables, um, this is something that I think people are going to be quite surprised about. So the HyperX Pulsefire Haste has a really good cable um it's quite thin and loose which is quite nice as you can see um as for the viper definitely more stiff as you can see straight away and then as for the rocat again good cable not as thin as the pulse fire haste um but not as uh sort of heavy as the viper feeling cable but out of the three my favorite cable is the viper now 
I think the Rokat's a close second, and the HyperX Pulsefire Haste is is a third. And I really don't like the cable on the Pulsefire Haste. Now, you might be thinking, well, why is that? Because it, it does seem like the best cable. Where I think the trend right now is definitely heading towards, you know, light, flexible cables, paracord, you know, as loose as you can possibly have it. But if you think of it like a, like a shoelace, like when you're waving your mouse around, I always get the cable caught under my mouse with this mouse here. And it happens sometimes on the Rokat, but it never happens with the Viper. I think personally, the a slightly heavier paracord type cable or a slightly less um, flexible paracord cable is the perfect cable for a mouse. Um, people like Boardsy and a lot of other um, YouTubers seem to prefer uh, paracord cables. I'm not sure if they play like a higher sense. They don't wave their hand around as much. But because I'm a low sense player and I use my, my arm and my wrist together when I'm just flicking the mouse around a lot, I just cannot play with this sort of cable. It always gets caught cool under my cable, uh, under my mouse. In the first hour of using this mouse, it got caught maybe three or four times under my mouse, and I just can't be dealing with that. It was quite frustrating. So I would say the Viper is probably the best, and then the the Rokat is is a second. Um, this is the second most flexible. So some of you would probably say this is the perfect one for you because it's a good medium where it doesn't get stuck under your mouse as much. But I think the Viper, I, I don't even feel the cable personally. So I would say the Viper's got the best cable. Jumping into the mouse feet for all these mice, um, I can't really remember what the Viper ones are like because um, I haven't used it in such a while, but they were Teflon. So, I mean, at least for the Viper Wired, I wouldn't, I would say you do need some aftermarket feet. Um, and then on the Rokat Burst Pro, they actually came with some decent ones, but they do take a bit to wear in. Um, what I would say about the, the Rokat Burst Pro is there was a slight difference in up and down to left and right speeds. So they were decent. You don't have to uh, change them out. You know, they're going to be good enough. But if you've been spoiled and you tried core pads and hyperglides before, you're probably going to want to change these out as well. Now, the HyperX had great uh, mouse feet. As you can see, I'm actually using them on the Viper because they were just that good. And I didn't want to buy, you know, more core pads for the Viper. So I just use these because they come with a second pack in the box. Um, same with these. I believe these come with a second one in the box as well. But I prefer aftermarket one of those. But yeah, these are probably the perfect um, mouse feet for that came in the box. So these are definitely the best out of all the three. As for the sensors, there's not really much to say as they as these two, I believe, use an adapted version of the 3389. This um, is the Razer Viper, and it's actually the the one of the first ones that came out. I think I got it literally on pre-order. So this one has the 5G optical sensor. I'm not sure if they've updated that to the Focus Plus in the, in the new wired ones or not. But I know with the wireless and the mini, they or no, definitely the wireless they have. Not sure about the mini. Um, as for the Roca, it uses the Owl sensor, and this is an adapted 3389. So I think personally, I find the best performance with the 3389. So these two feel absolutely great to me. Whereas a 3360 on the Logitech side doesn't feel as good. And I'm not sure why. I just feel like I've always performed best with 3389s. They feel extremely snappy. Now, as for the uh, Pulsefire Haste, it uses the 3335. For some reason, it doesn't feel as snappy to me. And one thing I definitely noticed wasn't as good is the liftoff distance um, was quite annoying because whenever I would lift the mouse up, it would pick up um, more of the cloth uh, of the pad. And when I would lay the mouse flat down again, I just felt like it was almost slightly off where I would put my put my mouse back down on the pad. Um, so personally for me, these two have definitely got the best sensors. The 3335 is a decent one. I think if you come from like a 3360 or um, if you just, you know, don't really get bothered by high liftoff distances, then this is something, you know, you wouldn't mind. But I've always preferred low distance, low liftoff distance mice. So for me, the Viper or the Rokat win in that category. Just quickly going over the scroll wheel and side button of each mouse. The scroll wheel on the HyperX is basically very similar to the other two, but a little bit more loose. Nothing to really complain about there. It's a decent scroll wheel. Um, as for the side buttons, they're a little bit more firm, um, but they do stick out from the shell. They're glossy finished and they're 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 good. There's nothing really to complain about there, apart from there's a slight bit of pre and post travel on the on the side buttons. As for the Viper, the scroll wheel is probably my favorite out of the three. Um, decently heavy, not too light, nice tactile steps, nothing to complain about. But the side buttons definitely leave some to uh, leave some more to desire, purely because they are quite recessed in the shell as they are on both sides, and they're decently firm and out of the way. Um, I have known pros who use the Viper for building in Fortnite, so I wouldn't say it's a game breaker. Um, yeah, a game breaker for, for this mouse. Um, but to be honest with you, um, you know, they could definitely do with some work, but they're not the worst type of side buttons in the world. I've had worse. Um, as for the Rokat, the scroll wheel is very similar to the Viper, nothing to complain about, but the side buttons are definitely a lot better. They're light, they're crisp, they're uh, quite big and also well well placed. Um, and they do um, have quite a nice tactile feel and they stick out from the shell. 
Um, I think my favorite side buttons are the Rocat, and when I was building in Fortnite with these, it felt very responsive and good to use. So um, I would rank the Rocat as the best side buttons and the Hyper X as the second best, and then the Viper is the worst. Just quickly going over the slight nuances in the shapes. So the Rocat Burst Pro does have flat left and right clicks. Um, some people like it, some people dislike it. I mean, what I'm going to say now is very um, personal preference because some people, you know, prefer flatter sides. Some people prefer um more angled sides um and some people prefer you know holes in their mouse because they just like the lighter feeling some people don't so it, it's all personal preference but the rocat burst pro does have slightly glossy sides i think these are great i think they're gonna be fine for anybody um unless you have really sweaty hands uh the shape is gets a bit thinner at the front end so it does feel more like a pencil when you're playing which is really nice i feel like i can aim really well with this mouse um the only issue with this one is because of the optical switches i don't feel like rocat has as good an impl implementation as the viper the viper has rubber sides um comparing them to the rocat burst pro i'm not sure which ones i like more i might slightly prefer these but the rubber just i don't know it gives it a nice premium feel to the mouse in my opinion so i do quite like the rubber side still um but it is a more curvy shape and the buttons do have um see if i can show the camera they have a more curvy um what's the word for them uh finger grooves in the buttons whereas the hyper x you can see slight slightly there not as much as the viper in my opinion at least by feeling um it feels a little bit more flat whereas the rocat verse pro are completely flat um i think the safest shape out of the three would probably be the viper and i mean it's a big company so they've probably done a lot of r d in which shape is the best and i think they've chosen a really good one um and the the Pulsefire Haste is a really good shape for uh, people with small to medium hands or people who fingertip grip. I think this one's going to be a great option as well. But for people who claw grip, I think this one probably is the one to go for if you can deal with the left and right click. Maybe uh, order off Amazon something that you can return it to if you don't like it, um, purely because they are quite polarizing and some will love it, some will hate it. Okay, so let's jump into the click sound test. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the Rocat Burst Pro done in time before I had to return it. So we've only got the HyperX and the Razer Viper for the click sound test and the B-roll shots. Hopefully this will have to suffice. So let's jump straight into it. Starting off with the Rocat. Not with the Rocat because we don't have it. Starting off with the HyperX Pulse Fire Haste. So what grip styles and hand sizes do I recommend um, each of these to go for? Uh, I'm Obviously, I've mentioned it a little bit in the video, but I'm just going to go over it now just to make it quite clear and easy to understand. The HyperX Pulse Fire Haste is a great shape, um, but it does have a hump in the middle. So it's not the best for uh, palm grip unless you have small hands. For bigger hands, I'd probably stay away from this mouse uh, purely because it is a little bit shorter than the Viper. The hump's in the middle, so you don't really get that support. Um and i don't know i just feel like the 3335 does slightly let this mouse down um overall it's a good mouse for people who are on a budget great option i think it's the cheapest out of the three and i think for small to medium hands this is going to be a really really good shape the left and right click on this mouse are near perfect um so something like this it's going to feel quite premium for the for the price so i can't really complain now onto the viper the viper is a great shape i mean like i said razor probably did a lot of r d on which shape they wanted to go for for their low profile mouse and this one definitely ticks a lot of boxes it's going to work for small medium or large hands um because the hump is well there isn't really a hump in the mouse so you can wield it however you want um the rubber sides give a nice in indent uh, i would say the only thing is obviously the the two grooves are in the middle so as you go out to the edge of the mouse um, it does flare out more so you might feel like if you have really big hands or if you position your your hand further up the mouse you might feel like you get a little bit less accuracy so maybe in that sense yeah this is not the most safe shape out of the three but it is still very very good 
Um, you've got obviously indent groups, indent grooves in the buttons. All the buttons are good, apart from maybe the maybe the side buttons. I would say they def they definitely need some improving. But the cable, in my opinion, is probably the best. Um, even though a lot of people will, will disagree with me on that. Um, but overall, great mouse. S small, medium, or large hands can use it. Claw, fingertip, um, even palm. I've used this. I use this mouse in almost a palm grip now because of my finger. Um, but yeah, great all round mouse. But the Rokas Bur Burst Pro, Rokas Burst Pro is uh, is quite an interesting shape. It's very similar to like an XM1, um, but being a little bit taller and slightly less wide, I feel like it flares out a bit less. You have flat sides on the Rokas Burst Pro, which I really like. You can see basically the shape of the mouse from the bottom. It flares out quite uh, quite hard and also goes pretty pretty high on the mouse. But as the sides, they taper in a little bit and then they go straight. Now, I really like this mouse for aiming, um, especially for large, uh, wide movements. It's a really good shape, especially for claw grip players. You're going to really like this one as it's quite short, but gives you a lot of stable uh, positioning for your for the back of your hand. And overall, I mean, the, the clicks go pretty low um, and it's got a really good recipe for just a great build. Um, the actual material itself, as you can see, the sides are a like glossy slash matte finish. Like it has almost like a hexagon texture on there. And that actually helps with your grip quite a bit. It's not as, it doesn't feel as bad as glossy. Like you don't get that slidey feeling. It just kind of like a sticky feeling. Like it is really nice actually. Um, I do like these. If I was, if I was to put the, if I was to choose whether to put these on more mice, I definitely would. They definitely gave me a lot of grip and they feel really great to use. It's quite a safe shape because what you'll notice is that the clicks on the edge actually don't go all the way to the edge. So you're able to rest your, your ring finger on there for bigger hands. So I would recommend this for a lot of people. The only big downside to this mouse are the clicks because they're quite polarizing. A lot of people either hate them or love them. Um, the sensor is great. I believe it's a adaptation of the 3389 sensor. So I can't really complain there. It's the owl sensor. It's, it's really good. I didn't have any issues with it. Um, overall, great mouse, great shape. Um, only downside are the, the left and right clicks. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope I helped you make a slightly more informed decision on which mouse is for you. Like I said before, they're all great mice, but they do have slight little nuances that make them better for different types of people. Um, obviously, smaller hands are going to prefer probably the Pulse Fire Haste. I would say people who claw are going to really like the Rokat. And people who are unsure or have slightly larger hands um, and maybe want to do different grip styles would definitely prefer the Viper. Um, and it probably has the best sensor and the best cable in my opinion. So yeah, I mean, you guys know already probably from this video that my favorite is the Viper out of the three. Um, but if I was still claw gripping um, and maybe the left and right clicks weren't as clunky, then I would say I would probably go with the Rokat. But this one is going to be great for other pe for certain people as well. It's just not really my sort of mouse. But guys, I hope I helped you make your decision today. Um, this video, I hope it came across as good quality um, purely because I didn't want to spend too much time on this video as I want to get around to the rest of the mouse pads. Um, but I'm trying to balance sort of quality with speed here and trying to get out as many reviews as possible. So I hope it came across good to you guys. Anyway, have a great day, guys. I thank, thank you for so much for watching. Um, these are really fun for me to make. I'm just trying to get out as many as possible, trying to beef up the YouTube channel with more and more videos and just trying to give you guys what you want. So if you have any more mice reviews you want me to do, um, I have a lot of mice. I have like 50 mice um, that I can go through uh, and also a lot more mouse pads as well. If you guys have any questions or if you want me to review other things, let me know down below. And again, guys, if you like the video, hit the like. If you dislike, hit the dislike button. And if you love the video and want to see more, hit that subscribe button, maybe hit the notification as well, just to know when I get out those videos. Um, I also let people know when videos are out on my Discord and also my Twitter. The links will be down below in the description. Anyway, have a good rest of your day. Much love. Peace out.